So in yesterday's video, I showed you how to use the cycles mode of the sampler to create nice pet sounds from random noise samples. And someone in the comments suggested that this may be good for bass sounds. And it really is. And I want to show you in this video how it works or how I do it inside of Bitwig, right? So what I want to do first is to record a bit of my voice. That's very, very important because we need a sample, but you can use actually anything. And it's not really important that you are in tune or in pitch. Uh, like I showed you yesterday, the cycles mode basically takes care of this. And we are only interested in some of the harmonics or overtones to create a bit of richness in the sound. So that's the, that's the main idea behind this. So what I do here is basically I just uh, record a bit of my voice. I, oh, I, oh, it doesn't really matter what I do. Um, and then what I want to do with this sound here is to actually get rid of some of the uh, noise stuff here. I really like to do this. Uh, here with the loud split, just mute basically here the quiet parts. Or the bit of my voice, ah, uh, or the bit of my voice, ah. Uh. And I um, use here this threshold to only let basically some of the harmonics pass. I only want to have some overtones here, some through the fundamental and some of the overtones, but I don't need the, the, the noisy parts, right, of my voice. Or the bit of my voice, I, oh. And then I use here my uh, auto leveler basically with a short fall time. Or the bit of my voice, I, oh, I, oh. it doesn't really matter what I do. Or the bit of my voice, I, oh. Something like this. And then I bounce this here, 32 bits. You can see it's super loud, right? Everything is, yeah, maxed out, normalized, right? It's a very high compression on that. But that's what I want because I want to have a consistent sound. And then instead of a sampler this time, because you can do this in the sampler and then um, layer it with, um, let's say, a polymer and the sign partial, this kind of works. Maybe I can show it here to you so you can see what I mean. So use a sampler. Maybe we rename this here to vocals. Uh, put this in here. You can just remove this and uh, we use here the cycles mode. Speed is 0%, formant is 0. Use the freeze mode and we can use the MIDI keyboard. AI. And yeah, that's, you can use this as a base if you want to. Of course, you can put a lot of distortion on this to get some of the harmonics better, uh, more in front, up front. You can also use here, let's say an EQ, um, EQ plus, sometimes I do this. Um, put this here and use the center frequency of C3, put a key track on there. And because everything is monophonic anyways, because bass sounds are monof monophonic, so you don't need to have here a polyphonic um, resonator. So you can just use this. Then we shift this here by 60. So this is now here our bass, the fundamental, right? So we use a high quality setting here and boost this. <laughs> boost here the bass harmonic, right? The fundamental to get actually the bass out of the sound. And then we use here, um, uh, recently I use over a lot of times here with the soft knee, which is just an overdrive or a soft clipper if you want to call it this. Okay, so we have bass. Uh, we don't need this and we need the segments maybe here or let's use um let's use a ramp 
I only want to run for RPM and just modulate your cycle position or you can modulate this if you want to. It doesn't matter, really matter. When the freeze mode is on, this one and this one is the same. Boost you also the second harmonic. This is then uh, C4, probably. So it's the second harmonic. Uh, what's the third harmonic? It's probably G, right? G4, G5, something like this. I'm not sure. It's probably wrong. It's probably. Uh, G4. Uh, I don't know. So this is one approach you can choose um, just using the sampler here. And then you can um, do a wavetable scan here with this position tool, right? You can put in here a very long sample if you want to. Uh, but you have to know that the longer the sample is, the resolution of this knob here goes down because you have only um, yeah two floats, two floating float points here. Um, so the precision goes down, right? Um, the longer the sample is. But you can, in, th in theory, you can put in a very long sample and then scan through the whole sample and then get a, a different over or different overtones all the time. Uh, while scanning through this sample. Okay, so this is one method. But what I usually do is to use this inside of the grid. So instead of a sampler here, we use a poly grid. And in here, I use the same sample, of course, and use cycles, use freeze. Uh, what else? That's it, probably. And then assign oscillator as a carrier, and then just face modulate here, this one. Um, ADSR. We probably want to have some kind of filter here. I just used, let's say, a low pass. Uh, let's use an sound key. I'll maybe use it here. Uh, let's see, a bit of distortion here, maybe. And then we go to the output. And maybe you want to mix in a bit of noise. Noise is always good. White noise, stereo, and let's say high pass, a bit of high pass here for the noise. Something like this. Let's see how this sounds. That's too much noise. filter after distortion I don't know
So I really like to use face modulation for this most of the times because you get more more overtones out. Again, let's use ramp here. You can use segments or whatever you want to use. Doesn't really matter. here a uh, static pitch in so we use here the pitch from the keyboard right so let's use a static pitch here so this gives you a different sound also interesting this in different direction here. So you get bass sounds out of this pretty easily. Um, it's just playing around with uh, recordings or with samples, you can create overtones pretty fast. And then you use your, use your uh, usual um, processing chains like distortion, uh, filtering, uh, notch filtering is nice. Let me use here XP with a notch filter just to play around with harmonics. That's pretty important actually for bass sounds or mid-range mid bass sounds. You don't need to have like a long chain with a lot of processing like you see in most tutorials uh it's you it's it's just about the overtones you have a fundamental which is your bass and then you have your overtones and then you play around with your overtones and this is this creates then um these nice bass sounds <laughs> this here. And maybe a bit of pitch modulation is also most of the times good. Uh, let's just modulate this here. 24, hell yeah. Yeah, and this is how we can create bass sounds with this. Um, but you can see you have a lot of knobs you can turn and twist and see how it how it's changed changes the sound. Um, but you have at least a lot of options with the sampler here. And then sometimes you just exchange the uh, sampler sound here for something else, for something random, or you record something new, and then you get totally different overtones, different bass sounds. And the fundamental here is taken care of with the sine oscillator. And then you also can influence how much you want to disrupt basically this fundamental here with this phase modulation knob, right? So if you really just want to have a clean sub sound, you don't modulate the phase modulation amount here too much.
it's really just about only the overtones with bass sounds. Resolution, huge. Bass sound fundamental on all the overtones here. And then you try to bring modulation here in this area, right? It's really fun to play around just with the sound. distortion here the amount of options there okay um that's it thanks for watching leave a like if you like the video subscribe to the channel and see you in the next one bye